And finally, new rule. Someone has to tell me why the same film critics who find every movie somehow lacking in woke credentials are all in on Top Gun Maverick, a two-hour propaganda ad for defense contractors, militaristic jingoism, and bombing foreigners. Every other movie that comes out, all of which are made by liberals, for liberals, with ardent liberal intent, fall short. If the movie is about poverty, the director didn't grow up poor enough to understand it. If it's about being gay, it's not gay enough. Asian, not Asian enough. Female, not enough agency. <laughs> Race, don't even try. Sidelining, whitewashing, colorism, white saviorism. No amount of virtue signaling is ever virtuous enough. But somehow, 96% of film critics love Top Gun <laughs> like a Catholic priest loves sleepaway camp. <laughs> I liked it, too. It's fun. It's nostalgic. And Tom Cruise has been such an ageless, reliably entertaining movie star for so long, it sometimes makes me think, Jesus Christ, is there something to Scientology? <laughs> no. But if you're a film critic and you've been making your life's mission to root out the insufficiently liberal in cinema, did you not notice that Top Gun is a lot about making warmongering sexy again? The weapons porn, the endless money shots of engines burning jet fuel, the big dick energy, <laughs> the aircraft carriers dancing in the sumptuous oily haze, all to the manly, macho, masculine sounds of Kenny Loggin? <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that if the U.S. military were a country, its fuel usage alone would make it the 47th largest emitter of greenhouse gases in, gases in the world? Our military is the world's single larger, largest consumer of petroleum. It spews so much smog, you can barely see the highway to the danger zone. <laughs> Think about that the next time you're watching a flyover, how we're destroying the world to protect it. Top Gun pretends our best fighter is still the F-18, but we spent $1.5 trillion on the F-35, which has never worked and never will, and yet we still buy it. It's the Yugo of fighter jets. <laughs> There is nothing more bloated and corrupt than the Pentagon budget. We conflate... You may. <laughs> we conflate defense with defense contractors. That's why their budget is $800 billion, more than the next nine countries combined. In 2003, it was $378 billion. Somehow, we took two wars off the books, but now need to spend twice as much? And on fighting who? In Top Gun, the enemy is just called the enemy. <laughs> we don't name them. We never see their faces. We don't hear them talk. Who are they? That's not important. <laughs> We don't know who we're bombing, and we don't care. We're bombing someone? Awesome. <laughs> you had me at America? Fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Whose ass we are kicking is on a need-to-know basis. <laughs> God bless America, and death to, to, to whom it may concern. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, enemy. It's not about you. It's about us. We have Tom Cruise and you don't. <laughs> this is a dick measuring contest. It doesn't really matter who owns the other dick as long as ours is longer. <laughs> it's just so ridiculous, the enemy. It's like having a movie called Godzilla versus none of your business. <laughs> <laughs> and that's on purpose. The people who made this movie understood that we as a nation right now are just too fractured to even have a common enemy. 
that we can all agree on. So they left it up to our imagination. Who do you hate? Put them in there. <laughs> you, would, you would think that for a nation like us that's been around a while and been through some shit together, it wouldn't be this hard to agree on a mutual bad guy. It, <laughs> it used to be Russia and still could be, but then Republicans started showing up in I'd rather be a Russian than a Democrat t-shirts and siding with Putin. And liberals, you couldn't have the enemy be an Arab country, that would be Islamophobic. <laughs> Can't be an Asian country, because that would be racist. Next, you'll be blaming China for COVID. <laughs> That's right, not even a pandemic could unite us. COVID couldn't do it, Russia couldn't do it, China couldn't do it, not even Amber Heard could do it. <laughs> you know, the old cliche has always been that if Martians attacked, it would be the one thing that brings the whole world together. Now, I don't think it would even bring Americans together. The Martians could blow up the White House like an Independence Day, and half the country would be cheering in the streets. <laughs> When they said, take us to your leader, we'd start killing each other over who that is. <laughs> Giant robotic tripods could be vaporizing New Jersey, and Republicans would say, this is what happens in Biden's America. <laughs> it never happened when Trump was in office. And Democrats would point out how the death lasers were disproportionately affecting low-income communities and people of color. And AOC would tweet, stop demonizing the Martian X community. <laughs> Alex Jones would call it a false flag operation and accuse the people whose heads were melted off of being crisis actors. Marjorie Taylor Greene would criticize the Jews for not using their space lasers on the Martians. <laughs> And Lindsey Graham would volunteer for the anal probe.